So yesterday we had a look at the 16 core Ryzen 9 3950X and I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting it to be this good. Specifically, I was expecting gaming performance to be a little bit worse than it was and the multi-threaded benchmarks were just on another level entirely. But one thing that I was really certain on was that this thing was going to run insanely hot. I mean, 16 cores in a tiny package like this, you can just only expect that. But I was really surprised there too. What we sort of discovered with the testing was that the 3950X runs at really low voltages by default. In a way, you could kind of say that the 3950X is pre-undervolted. Of course, by running at a lower CPU voltage, it means that it produces less power, which in turn means less CPU thermals. So today we are doing something that I've wanted to do ever since the 3950X was first announced, and that is cram all of those 16 cores into a tiny little overkill PC build. So whether you require the portability of a small form factor workstation or you just prefer the look of a minimal desktop system, this is a build that you'll definitely want to take note of. Most of you guys are familiar with the case that we're using here, it's the NCASE M1 V6 and every time I bring up this case I just feel the need to highlight the impressive thermal performance. Among all of the other small form factor cases that I've tested under 15 liters, the NCASE M1 permits the most airflow. You can side mount a 240mm radiator and I've found this to be the optimal solution for noise and thermals when it comes to CPU cooling. Three slot GPUs do actually fit in this case as well. For this build though, we'll be sticking to a two slot card and that allows us to mount two static pressure fans at the bottom of the case. I have done a full review on this case as well, so feel free to go back and watch that if you haven't already. For cooling, although AMD officially recommends a 280ml liquid cooler, I'm betting that we will be just fine with a 240ml at least at stock. The one that I'm using here is the Kraken X52 from NZXT and the reason for that is that it has rotatable pump leads that allow the tubes to fit a lot easier in the build. For additional case fans, we're using Noctua's Chromax Black NFF12 static pressure fans. These will help bring air up into the case from the bottom and feed that air to the GPU. Now for the motherboard, I've gone a bit overkill here. This is ASUS's X570 Crosshair 8 Impact. Do take note, this isn't a mini ITX board, it's a mini DTX board board, meaning that it is a bit longer vertically. Luckily, it does still fit into the NKZ M1 though, and you will be fine with other mini ITX cases that aren't a sort of sandwich style layout using a riser cable. As a recommendation to you guys though, most of you are better off with the X570i Strix, which is almost $200 cheaper. For that, it actually has the same VRM layout with 70 amp power stages that, just like the Impact, are actively cooled. There are things that the Crosshair 8 Impact has that the Strix doesn't though, an onboard power button, some headers and features for LN2 overclocking, and on the rear panel you've got a clear CMOS, a BIOS flashback, and a postcode readout which the Strix does not have. M.2 thermals will also be slightly better on the impact due to the positioning of the SODIMM slot. If you don't need those additional features though, which I'll be honest most of you do not, then the X570i Strix is a much better option. Now when it comes to the memory, we're going with a low latency 3200 MHz kit from G-Skill, this is their Trident Z Neo RGB kit. They actually sent this over for another build, which I'll be dropping in a little over a week, but no harm in warming up the kit with the 3950X first. 3200MHz CL14 memory provides some of the best latencies that you can currently achieve with Ryzen, about equal to a 3600MHz CL16 kit. This is a 32GB kit too, so plenty of overhead for most mid-range production workflows. Now the GPU possibilities here could be potentially endless. After all, this is mostly a CPU performance focused build, so how much gaming performance you require is totally up to you. However, given the price point of the rest of the components, I think the RTX 2080 Super does make a bit of sense here. One often overlooked feature of this card is that it actually has the very fast Samsung 16 gigabits per second memory modules packed onto the PCB, and these can be overclocked comfortably up to 18 gigabits per second and over. That's not only useful for gaming, giving you a nice boost there, but for certain production workloads that leverage the GPU and its memory, this will definitely give you a nice boost there too. 
For the power supply, we're going with Corsair's SF600, a 600 watt, 80 plus gold rated power supply in the SFX form factor. Also, the cables that I'm using here have been borrowed from the SF750 Platinum, but the SF600 also does come in a Platinum variant with sleeved cables. I will link that one down below. For storage, I'm using a single two terabyte NVMe drive. This is one of the PCIe Gen 4 drives from Gigabyte. As a formal recommendation to you guys though, you're probably better off going with the much more affordable Gen 3 drives which can be had for dirt cheap these days and lastly of course we can't forget about the cpu the part that makes this entire build possible the ryzen 3950x as i said in the intro this cpu has kind of blown me away in terms of what it allows you to do within a mainstream socket 16 cores and 32 threads without opting into a high-end desktop platform is pretty game changing now there's only one thing left and that's to build exactly to plan and everything is up and running as usual. Cable management was a breeze and as we can see from the top of the build everything is insanely compact just the way I like it. Kind of hard to believe there's a 16 core CPU in there. This is pretty much perfect for those who need this level of performance in a somewhat portable form factor. I wouldn't recommend going much smaller than this with the 3950X. Now for those wondering how I've got the fan set up in the case I've got the bottom fan set to intake pulling air into the case and then into the GPU and then the side mounted fans are also set to intake pulling air into the case. After testing several builds and configurations in the end case M1 this is what I found to work the best for CPU and GPU thermals. Speaking of which let's take a look at those now. This is likely the biggest consideration and concern for packing so much power into a small form factor but we can see here that even when running the 3950X at full tilt in a workload like Blender it's still sitting below 70 degrees C. So no problem here at all when it comes to thermals with a 240mm AIO, this is totally doable. The 3950X all core turbo frequency didn't dip at all as you would expect with those thermals. It maintained just a touch under 4GHz at full load. Do note that you will see some variance here in all core boost clock from board to board. For example, this is actually a touch higher than what we saw on the MSI X570 Unified that I used for my initial 3950X testing. Now the reason that the 3950X is able to run so cool is because it is using binned silicon. Now for those of you who don't know what that term means, binned or binning, it essentially means cherry picked in the context of manufacturing quality. So here the 3950X is using some of the most premium, most most efficient silicon which AMD know they can run at low voltages like we see here. 1.15 volts would certainly be considered an undervolt for a processor like the 3700X or 3900X which typically would run north of 1.2 or even 1.25 volts. Just to clarify I haven't undervolted the CPU here this is what it runs at by default. 
In terms of overclocking, you don't have a ton of headroom in this case with this thermal setup, but you may be able to stretch things up to 1.25 volts for the 3950X if you're not running insanely heavy workloads. My recommendation is to just leave it at stock if you're running a small form factor case like this. It is fast enough at those speeds anyway. Also, I will mention that this overclocked thermal testing was cut short due to ASUS's hard capped fan curve, which doesn't allow the CPU to exceed around 86 degrees C. In this instance, 4.3 gigahertz was stable at 1.264 volts but again it will vary from motherboard to motherboard vrm thermals at stock aren't an issue here either under 50 degrees c which is insanely cool the way i have the fan set up actually help a lot in this regard too seeing as it's blowing air onto the motherboard it's kind of like overkill active vrm cooling gpu thermals are definitely on the warmer end we're topping out at 81 degrees c after 20 minutes in heaven 4.0 dealing with air cooled high tdp gpus is something that we've talked about a lot on the channel. Your best solution in summary is to explore undervolting the cards at the same frequency that they'd usually boost to. By doing this, you're pretty much guaranteed an eight to 10 degree reduction in thermals depending on the GPU with no performance loss. So overall, this is a really powerful build. And just to put it into some context, about a year ago, I built the smallest 16 core Threadripper build that was possible using the Threadripper 2950X, the ASRock X399M motherboard, and the Cerberus Micro ATX case. That build was a pretty big deal at the time, but this build just puts that one to shame completely. It also has a lot more options in terms of motherboards, coolings, and uh, different case options. Whereas that one, you pretty much had one set motherboard and one set case that you had to go with. Now, before the 3950X released, I definitely anticipated some tough cooling challenges, especially in small form factor cases like the N-Case M1. But what AMD have done here is seriously impressive. You guys know that I play around with CPU cooling quite a lot. We've done d lidding we've done liquid metal, we've played around with low profile coolers and small AIOs. Uh, and in many ways, I anticipated the 3950X to be kind of like the final boss in a video game for myself. I was looking at 16 cores in a mainstream socket and thinking, how the hell am I even going to call this? But uh, big hats off to AMD for in some ways sort of pre undervolting the CPU to allow it to run quite cool even with 240mm AIO in a compact case. If you are interested in the 3950X or any other parts for this build, I will leave them linked down below in the description. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one.